Welcome to Vital Voices of the Environment, a Marstel Day production. This is Rebecca Rubin. I am here with John Tippett. John is Executive Director of the Friends of the Rappahannock, also known as FOR, a nonprofit conservation organization dedicated to the protection of the water quality and scenic values of Virginia's Rappahannock River. Since joining the Friends in 1995, John has overseen a tenfold growth in the organization's operations with a focus on developing and implementing innovative local government codes for reducing water quality impacts from development. John, welcome to Vital Voices of the Environment. It's great to be with you. <laughs> John, can, can you start us off by talking about what is really the central purpose of Friends? Well, I think to put it all in a nutshell, our, our purpose is to ensure that this river is healthy and scenic and to pass it on to our children and our grandchildren's grandchildren in that way. Are there aspects that make this particular river region unique or different in some way? The Rappahannock is special in a couple ways. Um, First, we've got about a 30-mile stretch of river um, upstream from Fredericksburg City that is um, uh, as close to pristine as you can find in uh, this part of the east. Um, you can paddle that stretch of river during the summer and see almost no signs of human habitation. And um, to be so close to such major urban centers, you know, Richmond and Washington, that really is uh, a value that, that you, can't put, you can't put a value on it. Uh, so that makes the Rappahannock unique. You just don't see that on, on our, some of our sister rivers. So how does Friends of the Rappahannock get involved? Well, we have three main program areas that, that focus on different aspects of the problem. Um, that's advocacy, education, and restoration. So on the advocacy side, we work um, mainly with local governments um, trying to get uh, innovative codes put in place. So we do a lot of work county by county, working with uh, local officials, um, helping them upgrade their local codes and ordinances. Mm-hmm. Right, um, right now we're working with the city of Fredericksburg um, and hope to bring that before the, the, the council very shortly. Um, on the education side, this is about um, the next generation. Mm-hmm. So we put a lot of effort in focusing on kids and helping them develop a, a solid uh, stewardship ethic. Our programs are tied to what are called the state standards of learning so that the teachers have a good reason to bring them here to help the, the kids on the basic things they're going to be tested on. But, but we can, in the context of those, also teach them about the river and about what it means to be a good steward as a kid at home and what their parents can do, too, because there's no better way to reach parents than through kids. Mm-hmm. And, and finally, on the restoration side, we focus our efforts in the, in the headwaters of the Rappahannock. So that's from the Blue Ridge area um, down to Fredericksburg, and, um, where there's a lot of agriculture and a lot of uh, livestock. So, um, and there are a lot of farmers who, even though the state has cost share programs to help them pay for these management practices that reduce runoff, um, there's a lot of farmers who still can't afford their portion of the pie. Mm -hmm. And so what we'll do is, um, through various sources, gather money up to pay for the uh, 25 or 40 percent that the farmers aren't able to do on particularly bad sites where the cows are in the streams, where where they've got severely eroding stream banks, and the farmer may just be barely making it economically on the margin. And we'll go up there and talk to the farmer and say, hey, we're going to make this a 100% deal for you so that we can solve this problem. If you could send one message, if we could broadcast one message to the next generation, what would it be? Mm. Um, Well, I'll tell you this. I was blown away the other day by some statistics that I saw about um, uh, why people act and why people don't. And it was a huge survey of some 12,000 people. Um, And they sliced up the information in various ways. But they were able to group people um, into people that are involved doing things at home to, to to reduce their impacts to the environment and people that aren't. And time and time again in these, in these statistics, when they sliced it one certain way, one group was high, the other was low, mm-hmm. and it turned out it wasn't political persuasion, it wasn't age or race or any of the things we might normally think. It was, how confident are you that your actions will make a difference? And, and I've really been thinking about that a lot, and I think that the message that I would put forward is to, to realize um, have confidence in the fact that your actions can make a difference. And if you don't, then 
probably watching the 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 traditional news media too much, you know, mm-hmm. and do something to expose yourself to all the good things that are happening and how how individuals and then individuals working together with others really are changing. In fact, most of the change that occurs is because of one person starting and getting more people. Mm-hmm. And until we realize that, until we until we build the internal confidence that yes, my actions are going to make a difference, then there's going to be this large population of people who don't who don't act. John Tippett, thank you for being with us today. My pleasure. This has been Vital Voices of the Environment, a Marstel Day production.